Let's pray. God, I pray in the next few minutes that you would speak into our hearts and lives what you have done through Christmas and that we could truly understand maybe on a new level today for some, maybe for the first time why we can sing all is well. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was the governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find the baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, multitude of voices, read it with me. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told to them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. A few months ago, my oldest daughter and I had the opportunity to do some stargazing. Uh, we were out laying on a picnic table looking up at the sky and she's learned a lot about the sky and so she was able to point out to me different stars and constellations and we saw also in the sky some stuff that weren't stars. We saw some airplanes in the sky and it's kind of fun to watch an airplane flash and go across the sky, right? Uh, maybe you've also looked up at the sky and seen satellites. Uh, satellites kind of move at a different pace than the other we had gotten to be out for a while and we both had gotten to see multiple, not only airplanes and satellites, but we got to see multiple shooting stars. And that was just fun for us to get to share together. But after we had been out for about an hour, we saw this up in the sky. And as it started to go across the sky, I saw these shining dots that were somewhat in line and as they were I, I looked at Anna and I was like what is that and and I had this the hair on the back of my neck like just stood up like all the science fiction movies I've ever seen in my life started to come together in this moment and it went up uh, really for about 30 seconds through the sky and we were like what are we seeing? Oh my goodness, it's an invasion. Like here we, and, <coughs> and after, after we got about halfway across the sky, 
the dots started to disappear. And I'm like, they're jumping into hyperspace. <laughs> like, what, like, watching those little shining dots in the sky prompted a response in both of us that was undeniable. Uh, what, what, I'm going to come back to this story as I walk through the next few minutes. But what I want to show you in the Christmas story is a response around a key word in this Christmas story that we have not yet talked about. If you've been part of our church family over the last month, we've been looking at really the theology behind the story, this story so many of us are familiar with. And what, what I want to show you is the word glory in the text. And, I, and as we look at the Christmas story, uh, uh, at this word glory, I want you to see how heaven and earth responded at Christmas some 2,000 years ago and then invite you into that response today. So here we go. First glory appearance in the Christmas story is verse 8. The shepherds are out in the field doing some stargazing. Here's what we read. So in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them. And then he says, what and they what? The glory of the Lord shone around them. Now the word glory, we often think about when we give God glory, and that's like praise and rejoice and honoring God. But in the Bible, often glory shows up when it's the glory of God. And one of the things that was fun for me as I was prepping just to talk for a few minutes with you about what Christmas has done in our lives was to see that glory, the root word in the original language, actually means to shine. That, that God's glory at Christmas decided to show up and shine in a unique way on earth the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were filled with great fear there was a response like talk about the hair standing up on the back of the necks of the shepherds what they were watching in the sky was probably a little bit more um, yeah than my line of dots let's just say it that way now I wish I could tell you I could make an angel show up here on stage uh, if, if, I, if I could do that, I do believe there are angels here in the room that, that we don't actually see physically with our eyes unless God decides to do that for us. If I did, I, I believe it would get your attention in a significant way. I, I can't do that. But what I hope I can do is show you the other thing that shows up as showing the glory of God in the text. And it's actually who Jesus is and what Jesus has done for us in the manger. If you actually skip past the words I've taught, right after we read the shepherds returning, glorifying God, we read that when Jesus was just a little child, his parents took him to the temple to be blessed and prayed over. And there was a man by the name of Simeon who God had promised he would get to see, not, not see like dots in the sky, but Simeon was going to get to see what God had done for man through his son, that, that he was going to see the Messiah. And so Jesus shows up, they give Jesus to Simeon to pray over him, and then we read these words in verse 29. Lord, he's praying now in response to God, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen something. You see this? My eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples a light again glory means to shine a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people you, do you know your people Israel not just your people Israel the Gentiles the world has been shown the glory of God the Bible tells us through Jesus how well one of Jesus closest friends John when he tells the Christmas story he says this that the word of God the eternal divine word of God became 
flesh dwelt among us and we have seen his what? His glory, glory of the only son from the father, full of grace and truth. That the world has been shown the glory of God through Jesus. That there truly is a real king in a real kingdom. His name is Jesus. He is the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God. In his love and by his grace, he showed up on earth. We are the visited planet. Like, think about this. As much as I've spent in my life thinking about uh, life being out there somewhere in space, that has no real effect on me. To have an eternal God show up here on earth. This is the story we have at Christmas. We truly are the visited planet. That he came. He came. He lived a perfect life. He, he died for our sin. He rose again. And he's coming back. This is the story of Christmas. If, if I were to summarize what I'm going to try to encourage you to be part of with heaven and earth is when you truly see what God has done through the nativity, when, when we truly see the nativity, then we will humbly give God glory. When we truly see what God has done through Christmas, when we truly see the nativity, then we will humbly give God glory. And, and this is what the world has done. We, we are we, we, we are responding to not just seeing something out in space that was far off and we're like, what? No, he came to earth. He came to earth. This, this, this God in the flesh here on earth. We have hundreds of prophecies that he fulfilled perfectly that we have recorded in documents that predate his showing up that we have carbon dated that he fully fulfilled we have billions of lives that have been transformed over the last 2,000 years because of this person showing up here on earth and so what do we do in response well here's what we see in the text verse 14 in response to what God was doing the angels show up and the angels say in verse 14, glory to God in the highest. How many of you feel that way right now, by the way? Yes. That's, that's, that, that, there's a response that all of our bodies have to different things, right? The angels, the angels had a response to what God was doing. The, 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 Peter tells us they long to look at what Jesus was going to do for us and they show up and they respond with glory they shine back to God in response to him showing up here on earth glory to God in the highest and on earth what peace among those with whom he is pleased and you might think well that's just the angels that's how they respond that's not just how they respond skip down to verse 20 after the shepherds go and see the nativity the shepherds return doing what glorifying shining in response back to the the light that has shown up on earth glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen as it had been told to them they saw something in that manger that night that got their attention and what did they do they responded by glorifying God when we truly see the nativity what happens in our lives as we respond by humbly giving God glory. In the words of the famous poet and hymn writer Fanny Crosby, to God be the glory, great things he has done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son, who yielded his life an atonement for sin, to open the life gates that all may go in. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the, what? Glory, 
great things he has done. If you're here in the room and you know what he has done for us at Christmas, the appropriate response is to glorify God. The early church fathers wrote that when Christmas happened, heaven and earth came together. More than just seeing some dots in space that was far out there. Heaven and earth came together that God came down to man so that man can now go up to God. And now man gets to join in with heaven in glorifying God in response to who he is and what he has done. And together we're going to do something that's going to be a visual picture of this in just a moment. But before we do, I just want to acknowledge that I think there are people here in the room that really think that this Christmas story that, that, that we celebrate in Christian churches, that many of you think, man, that is crazy talk. Like many of you think, I mean, like this is talking like E.T. to you. And, 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 and you came because you wanted to support a family member. And I just want to say first, I'm so proud of you for showing up and supporting a family member. That is a wonderful thing. What you're doing is loving and supportive. That is a wonderful thing. But I want to go back with me, you for just a second to the story with my daughter. That night we saw that in space and it prompted this response to us. And we're like, oh my goodness, what are we looking at? But our phones, we were out of the, an area where we had any cell service. The next day I was driving and we were driving. And as soon as we got to cell service, you know what we did? We did some research. We wanted to figure out what is it that we had just seen up in the sky. Uh, how many of y'all know what we had seen in the sky? Yes, some of you, a lot of you, actually more this hour than last hour. There's more in the room last hour. That's awesome. What we were seeing in the sky is like Elon Musk's, like this is what he's put into space to try to bring internet to the world. And you can see it every once in a while up in the sky. It's about two weeks away from us getting to see it again in this area. What we, were, what we were watching in the sky was not UFOs, but, but, but we, we wanted to know, right? We thought it was worth doing some research to figure out what was it that was up there. And here's what I want to challenge and invite you to do. It, what, if, if there are truly billions of people whose lives have been transformed by a Christmas story that says that God has come down to earth, would it not be worth your time? to at least spend some time researching that this could potentially be true and, and, and talk to a few people that, that say they know this God as real and, and, and to, to entertain the fact that maybe we, we in fact are the visited planet through God's son, Jesus Christ. Would you, would you consider that? If we could help you with that, you could text the word TALK to 96123 talk to 96123 or you can go out the door to your left after our service we have a next steps team that would love to talk with you if you're here in the room and yeah you do know that believe that or if you, if you want to talk to other people get to know other people this was mentioned earlier but we're jumping in into the new year talking about what does it look like to truly live in community with other people that say they know and follow this Christ I believe that it can be the most forgiving gracious loving community that the world has ever seen if we would truly respond to who Jesus is and what he has done. So now here's what we're going to do. I'm going to come over and light the candle. And again, remember, one of the things that jumped out to me this week was learning that glory literally means to shine. And here's what I want you to think about as I light my candle on this Christ candle is God's glory showed up here on earth some 2,000 years ago. He decided to step in and shine his light to us on earth. And as this light comes around, I want you to think about Jesus showing up here on earth in your life, and you get to respond to him by glorifying God. And we're going to do that as we sing. I want you to think about the words that you're singing, and I want you to think about your life being used to show and shine the glory of God to others. Thank you for joining us today for Worship Online.
If you're in our area, we want to invite you to come to physically connect to your local church. We would love to help you to live and love like Jesus alongside of others who are doing the same. If you're from outside of our area, can I challenge you to find a local church in your area that's going to preach the Bible and exalt Jesus? Smash the like button, subscribe, share with friends, and turn on notifications if you'd like to stay up to date with us. And thanks again for joining us.